Namaskar and welcome once again to this series of lectures on principles of construction management. In the last couple of lectures, we have been talking about planning, scheduling, resource management and today continuing from that discussion, we will be talking of what is called crashing of a network. Now, what is crashing? Construction projects involve considerable amounts of expenditure in terms of time and money. Activities in the projects have to be scheduled such that they are completed with the minimum time and cost. In our earlier discussions, we have seen that both time and cost are largely dependent on the resources allocated to the individual activities in the project. One of the important features in network analysis applied to construction management like CPM is that the duration of an activity can be reduced to a certain extent by increasing the resources assigned to it. Now, in this lecture, let us look at the concept of reducing the project duration by reducing the durations of critical activities in the project by increasing the resources allocated to them. What we had said last time and I would like to reiterate that today, there are two kinds of activities let us say, critical and non-critical. By doing reallocation of resources, leveling resources, we try to rationalize the resource deployment over the period of time and that is done with non-critical activities because the duration of the project is governed by critical activities. So, now the discussion today is, is there a possibility of reducing the overall duration of the project. Now, in order to reduce the duration of the project, obviously, it is not important to concentrate on the non-critical activities obviously, we must concentrate on the critical activities. Meaning thereby that if we want to reduce the duration of critical activities, obviously, there will be a requirement or a commitment of additional resources, which will cause additional expenses. What has to be seen is whether this additional expense of resources can be justified in terms of the benefits that may accrue to the contractor by finishing the project early. That is something which is relevant because as far as the contractor is concerned, the project cost has a direct cost and an indirect cost and so on. So, we have to see the overall perspective of balancing the additional resources, of balancing the expenditure in the additional resources and the benefits accruing therefrom. So, that basically is the essence of what we will talk about today and that is what is called crashing of network. Now, what are the components of total project cost? One component is obviously direct cost which comprises of expenditure that is specific to a project that is cost of materials, labor and equipment. Indirect cost includes expenditure like tariff for infrastructure facilities, rent and so on. Now, cost time trade off is what we talk about really. The analysis of the interrelationship between the time and cost of a project in order to minimize its cost and duration is called the cost time trade off. This picture here is a schematic representation of what goes on. If we try to reduce the project duration, our direct cost increases, but our indirect cost decreases. So, the total cost which is essentially the sum of the direct cost and the indirect cost that is what has to be seen. So, it will reduce up to a certain point in time and then start increasing again. So, we should be targeting at getting to this duration of the project. In other words, by reducing the duration of individual activities, the total cost of the project can be reduced to an optimum level. Now, let us technically define what is crashing. Expediting an activity to an earlier time by mobilizing more resources, committing more resources to it is known as crashing. Now, let us look at an example to explain this concept. Consider a project having six activities A, B, C, D, E, F and the network of the project along with the durations of the individual activities is shown here. The cost of crashing individual activities, it could be in any units, it is given in Indian rupees here, is shown in the table given below. Now, this is the table determine which activity should be crashed first in order to reduce the project duration. So, suppose we have this project has, which has six activities and these are the durations, let us say that is given in days 
and this table gives us the cost of crashing for one day. So, if we want to carry out activity A in three days, it is possible even though it is four days here, it is possible to do it in three days provided we are able to mobilize additional resources of 4000 rupees. Similarly, activity E instead of 6 can be done in 5 days provided we are willing to spend another 1500 rupees. We must remember that at the end of it, it is not possible for any activity to be infinitely crashed. That is, we cannot say that if we are willing to increase the commitment of resources indefinitely, the time can be reduced indefinitely. This cannot be done. There may be minimum times for any of these activities beyond which no matter how we crash it, it will not work. So, there is a minimum time which is required, there is a reasonable time which we are willing to give and beyond that reasonable time, yes, it is possible to reduce it to that minimum time by putting in additional resources. So, this is the backdrop of carrying out this exercise. So, once we have this information listed with us, which is the cost of crashing for one day for the different activities, obviously it makes sense to begin with the activity which requires the minimum amount of cost. So, we should do that activity first, which involves minimum additional commitment of resources. The second part of it, the discussion is that is that activity critical? will really making that commitment help as far as reducing the project duration is concerned. That will happen only when the activity is critical. So, the first thing to do perhaps is to find out which are the critical activities and then try to see what are the resources required if we want to crash those activities. So, let us move forward and we do the network analysis. We try to find out that the paths in the network A, D, B, E and C, F these are the three paths in this network comprising of activities A, D on one side, B, E on the other and C, F as the third and the critical path is B, E. This takes 6 and 6, 12 days, this takes 10 days and this is 9 and we are looking at the maximum of this and therefore, the critical path is B, E which is 12 days long. So, this project with the given information can be completed in 12 days at a certain cost. Now, let us try to see how we will use this information on crashing. The first question to be asked is which activity should be crashed? From our analysis given here, the duration of the project is governed by the critical path B E and since the cost to crash E by one day is lower than that of B, activity E should be crashed first. So, we are looking at E is critical and B is critical. To crash B it requires 2000, to crash E it requires 1500 and therefore, it makes sense to crash E first and then see how things change. Only to reiterate, even if any of the non-critical activities A, D, C and F is crashed, the project duration will still remain 12 days and it makes no sense to do that. Now, let us try to formally define what is called the cost slope of an activity. The extra cost in expediting an activity to reduce its duration by unit time is called the cost slope of that activity. That is given by crash cost minus normal cost divided by normal time minus crash time. That is the cost slope. In fact, in this table when the cost of crashing for one day was given, what was essentially given is the cost slope of all these activities. Because what we mean by this is that this is the cost that is incurred for crashing that activity by a single day. And obviously, from the given set of activities, the activity that has the minimum cost slope should be crashed first. Let us consider two activities A and B, the normal durations, the crash durations, normal cost and crash cost of A and B are given in the following table. And if we were asked a simple question as to which of these should be crashed first, the analysis would basically be that A has a normal duration of 10 and a crash duration of 7, B has 12 and 8. So, these are essentially the minimum times that is required for the activities A and B. Beyond this, it cannot be crashed. Now, the crash cost, which is the cost at the crash duration, this is not the cost slope. In the previous example, what was given was crashing per day. Here, we are giving the crash cost, that is the cost at the crash duration and the normal cost is given here. So, if we want to calculate 
the cost slope of these activities, we have to carry out this small calculation crash cost minus normal cost divided by normal time and crash time difference and we get 1000 here and 750 here. This 1000 here is nothing but 8000 minus 5000 divided by 10 minus 7 which is equal to 3000 divided by 3 and that is equal to 1000. Similarly, the cost slope for activity B is 750. Given this data, activity B cost slope is lower and therefore, if it is required activity B needs to be crashed first. So, having done this simple example, we can lay down the protocol or the procedure to be followed for crashing a network. The first step is identify the critical path or paths of the network and the corresponding activities, determine the project cost, find the cost slope of critical activities, rank the critical activities in ascending order of the cost slope and crash the activities in the critical path as per that ranking. Activities can be crashed only till their respective crash durations. Obviously, we cannot try to crash them beyond that crash duration. Calculate the revised project cost, repeat steps 1 to 5 till the optimum cost and duration have been obtained. Remember that what we are asked to do is repeat steps 1 to 5. What is 1? 1 is to find out the critical path. Having done the critical path first or having identified the critical path first, but having changed the durations of those activities by crashing and so on, it is likely that some other activities or some other paths would become critical. And therefore, as we crash activities in a stepwise manner, it is important that at each step, we check if other activities have become critical or not. Because if they have, then the cost slope there also will become important. This is something which we have to keep in mind as we do an actual example. And that is what we will do. We will consider a project having seven activities as shown below with their dependencies normal durations and crash durations of activities in days and the event times are shown in the network. So, this number here is T n that is the normal time, this is the crash time which is T c. So, with this information about the crash time and the normal times given for all the activities, we will proceed to find out what activities to crash, what not to crash and so on. And we are also given the information that the indirect cost as far as the project is concerned is 6000 rupees per day. So, this table here in addition to the normal times and the crash times, it gives you the information about the normal cost and the crash cost for all the activities. So, if we look at A for example, the normal times were 3 and 2 as I explained in the previous slide and the crash cost is 7000 and 5000. So, that analysis we can do for all the activities and what we proceed to do is the first step which is identification of the critical path and activities. Now, this we are already familiar with and I am not going to spend time on this. We find that the normal duration of the project is 16 days and 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 is the critical path. That is our critical path runs like this 1, 2, 4, 5 and 6. So, the activities A, C, E and G are critical. So, there is activity A, C, E and G. These are the critical activities it is not a very difficult network. I am sure you can find out that there are other paths, but they are not critical. So, now as far as the project cost is concerned at this point in time, assuming that the activities will take place at their normal durations, we will have the total cost which is the sum of all the activities that is activities A plus B plus C and so on right up to G. The sum of the normal cost will give us the direct cost of the project and that in this case turns out to be 60,000 INR. As far as the indirect cost is concerned, we have the information that it is 6000 rupees per day and 16 being our duration of the project, the total indirect cost is 96,000 and we have the total cost as the sum of this plus this which is 156,000 INR. This of course, is the normal cost of the project. Now, let us try to move forward and try to do the crashing business. We know that activities A, C, E and G are the critical activities. From the information given the T n and the T c 
as far as activity G is concerned is both the same, which means that this activity simply cannot be crashed. It will take that amount of time. As far as other activities are concerned A, C and E, they can be crashed by different amounts. A can be crashed by one day, C can be crashed by two days and E can be crashed by three days provided we are willing to put in a certain amount of additional resources and that is where we have to find out the cost slope. The cost slope for each of these activities is 2000, 4000 and 3000 calculated by dividing the difference in cost by the difference in time. So, once that is done, we know that if we rank these activities A, C and E, A has the minimum slope, then it comes to E followed by C. So, since A has the minimum cost slope, let us try to crash activity A by one day and this requires an additional cost in terms of direct cost which is equal to the cost slope of activity A, but it also results in a saving of one day which is equal to the indirect cost of the project itself, which means that as far as the revised cost calculation is concerned, the revised project cost becomes 156,000 plus 2000 which is the cost slope of activity A minus 6000 which is the indirect cost for one day and that is 152,000 which is lower than 156. So, basically we have a table like this where we say that if we were completing the project in 16 days which was the normal duration, the direct cost was 60, the indirect cost was 96 and the total was 156 in thousands. Now, we have crashed the project by changing the duration of activity A to 15 and the direct cost and indirect cost the sum of this is 152 which is 4000 lower than the previous total cost. So, this obviously is a better solution, but now can we find an even better solution is what is the next step. But before that we need to modify our network to check if there are any changes in the critical activities. So, if we redraw this network and say that instead of 3 this activity is being completed in two days, we find that there is no change in the critical path in the network which continues to be having activities A, C, E and G even though the project duration has come down to 15 days and the cost has come down to 152,000. So, let us go to the next step which we did last time that is a cost slope analysis. We find that even though A has the minimum slope, but it cannot be crashed any further because it has already reached the crash duration. So, our choice is limited to C and E and between these two obviously, we must crash E by one day and see what happens to the direct, indirect and the total costs. So, that analysis is shown here given that the cost slope of activity E is 3000, the revised project cost becomes 152 plus 3 minus 6000 and we have a lower number that is 149000, which means that we revise the table that was shown last time in this form now that from 16 to 15 and now to 14, the direct cost has increased from 60 to 62 and now to 65, but the indirect cost has reduced by 6000 for every day of reduction that we are able to achieve and we are now working at 149. The issue is can we do more? Let us try to now identify if there are any changes in the network. If we do this, we still find that the critical path is A, C, E and G and we are free to go ahead and look at the cost slope of the critical activities. So, we find that we can still crash activities and 4 can still become 2. Now, this is the revised network after this revision. We have crashed A from 3 to 2 and now we have crashed E to 4 days and the project duration has become 14 and the cost is 149 and if we do the network analysis at this point in time, we still find that the critical activities are A, C, E and G. So, we go back to this table which gives us the cost slopes and we try to crash E by one more day. Once we do that, we come to a total cost of 146, 149 was the previous cost, add the cost slope of activity E and subtract the indirect cost. So, once we come to 146, we go back to this table and we find that this 146 is still lower than the previous iteration. So, we perhaps have still some room for doing more crashing. 
So, we come back to this picture here. Now, we will begin with the project duration of 13 and the durations of the activities have already been adjusted here and we now find that the critical paths are A, C, E, G and A, B, F, G. So, A, A, C, E, G is not the only critical path. There is another critical path A, B, F and G. So, activities B and F have also now become critical. So, if we bring it to 13 days, now if we want to reduce the project by one more day, we have to ensure that we also account for the cost slopes in activities B and F and then try to see if we can get a better cost than 146,000. So, in order to do that, we come to this table where we have now included activities B and F. Earlier we were working only with C and E, now we are working with B and F. Of course, A and G are out of the reckoning having reached the crash durations in the first iteration itself. Now, if we look at these cost slopes, we cannot really proceed as simply as we did in the previous case and the reason is the following. There are two critical paths and the activities along both paths have to be crashed simultaneously by one day and only then the total duration of the project will reduce from 13 to 12. What I am trying to tell you is that if we look at this project, the way it is shown, there is this path here which is C and E, there is this path here which is B and F. It makes no sense to just crash an activity whether it is C or E based on its cost slope because then this path here will still remain critical and we will not get any reduction in the project time. So, in order to get a reduction in project time, we have to find a combination. It could be B and C which is this and this, it could be B and E, it could be F and C, it could be F and E. So, any of these four combinations, if the cost slope that is the additional cost that is incurred in changing the duration of the activities by one day, the sum of that has to be considered and that is what has been done here. So, B and C gives a total cost slope of 6000, B and E gives 5000, 5500 here and 4500 here and this obviously then ranks highest. That is the cost slope of crashing F and E together is 4500 rupees. So, if we do that, then we will be able to reduce the project by one day. In other words, what we will do is, we will have this 146,000, we will add to it not the cost slope of one activity, but two activities that is E and F and subtract the indirect cost for one day and we get a number 144,500, which is still better than 146,000. So, if we look at this table now, from 16 days which we started, we have come down to 12 days and we have reduce the total cost from 156 to 144.5, even though we have had to increase our direct cost from 60 to 72 and a half. So, the network after crashing E and F by one day looks like this and we would now like to find out if it is possible to crash it any further. Of course, the critical paths continue to be having activities A, C, E, G and A, B, F, G. Only this activity is still continues to be non-critical as far as this project is concerned. Now, if you look at this table to carry out the cost slope calculations, we find that activities A, E, F and G have all reached their critical times and therefore, the only possibility that we have for crashing is activities B and C and since there are two critical paths, activities along both the paths have to be crashed simultaneously by one day and only then we will get a reduction from 12 to 11. Now, keeping this in mind, B and C combination has a total cost slope of 6000. Please note that activities A, E and F cannot be crashed any further and in that case, the revised cost becomes 144.5 plus 6 which is the slope of the crashed activities and minus 6000 which is the indirect cost for one day and we find that there is no change in the cost of the project. So, what we have reached now is a plateau here 144.5 to 144.5 and even though we have reduced the project duration by one day. In other words, we would still like to crash the 
project because for the same cost we are able to complete the project one day earlier. So, this is definitely a better option than the previous one that is trying to complete the project in 12 days at the same cost and we basically say that the project cost is 144.5 thousand with these critical paths. Please also take note that once we have reduced the project duration to 11 days, D also has become critical. 2 plus 4 plus 5 is 11, 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 is 11, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 11. So, all the activities basically as far as this network is concerned are now critical activities and there is no float in these activities. We can complete the project in 11 days at the cost of 144.5 thousand. But of course, we, we should try to examine whether or not we would like to crash the project further if the activities can still be carried out in a shorter time. For that, we go back to this table. We now find B, C and D are the activities which are candidates for crashing and we find that Yes, there is a scope because we are still working with 3, 2 and 4 as TP for activities B, C and D which is higher than their crash durations and these are our cost slopes. With this information, we try to find out what is the actual cost in terms of crashing the network by one day which would involve all the paths. Now again, the discussion that the activities along all the paths have to be crashed simultaneously and only then the duration of the project can be reduced from 11 to 10. This takes us to the discussion that what are the possibilities? B, C and D have all to be crashed by one day and only then we will be able to get the project to 10 days. What is the cost of crashing all these three activities? The cost is 10,000. Now, obviously, this 10,000 is greater than the saving of 6000 and therefore, we expect the cost to be higher. Let us do that and formally close this discussion. 144.5 plus 10,000 minus 6000 gives you a higher total cost than what you had when we were completing the project in 11 days. So, this is the project cost in 11 days, this is the project cost in 10 days. So, if we put it back in a table, we find that 144.5 has now become 148.5 and therefore, it is a case that crashing may be stopped at this point because we have already reached the optimum. We have now started increasing the cost of the project even though the activities are still crashable. That is theoretically, if we want, we can complete the activities in a shorter duration than what is being planned, but that will involve cost to the extent that the total cost of the project will increase. We must also remember that in this model, what we have done is we have assumed that the cost slope is constant from one day to another. There is always a possibility that there is an activity which from 6 days to 5 days costs some x, but if we try to crash it from 5 to 4, it might cost 2x. This is the kind of thing which we have not done in this discussion. What we have assumed it that whether you are crashing the activity from 6 to 5 or 5 to 4 or possibly 4 to 3, the crash cost is the same or the cost slope is still the same. That is something which we can do as an exercise, try to change the cost slope and see how it works. But the algorithm that has been laid out, that is we are trying to understand, recalculate the cost slopes that enables us to take care of any change in the cost slopes should that information be made available to us. Now, with this, here is the summary of our discussion. The project shall be completed in 11 days with a cost of 144.5 and the benefit has been that we have been able to crash from 156 to 144.5 and reduce the duration by 5 days. Initially, we started with 16 and now we are able to complete the project in 11. So, it is a win-win situation, it is a shorter project duration and a cheaper cost. So, in addition to the cost and time recoveries, the early completion of the project has also got the following benefits, recovery of delays, early availability of resources for other projects, receive early completion bonuses if that is applicable for a project, avoidance of seasonal issues which may affect productivity at a later point in time, improve project cash flows. So, with this, we come to an end of our discussion today and as usual, this is the list of references which might help you understand the subject a little better and I look forward to seeing you at another lecture. Thank you.